Hey, what's up everybody? This is Omar from the Bullish Bears team. Uh, I'm doing a quick market recap before I head out to the gym. It's December 13th, 2016. And I want to talk about a couple of plays today, a couple of uh, uh, stocks that were on my watch list. If you uh, traded some of the stocks on my watch list, you had the potential to make a lot of money today. Um, I actually didn't trade a stock on my watch list. I actually traded a stock that I found up on my scanner, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. But first, let's talk about a couple of stocks that uh, that were on my watch list that ran pre-market. Um, the first one I want to talk about is uh, NDV. Oh, I'm sorry, not NDV, EV. That was the one that was on my watch list, so that's not what I was. NC, NVCN. All right, so <clears throat> um, if you're going to notice here, I'm on a five-minute chart, and... As a matter of fact, I'm going to move this over so I can get a nice big, let me move this over, make this one chart. And you're going to notice here that it started ripping, this is the pre-market, and it started ripping actually pre-market here, uh, actually this is pre-market, this is pre-market. So right here it started ripping, and usually there's some news that impacts, there's some catalyst, right? It's usually some sort of news, and uh, then after the market, let's see. Let's see what happened. Bias, oh, here it is. It was some sort of acquisition of, uh, of uh, neobastic assets. A assets. So the acquisition drove, um, it was a new deal, a licensing deal, to purchase assets and access the sole facility so allowed to continue tissue involved assembly activities for its remaining customers. And based on that news, that started to drive the price up. So you're going to notice here, and this was about uh, 705, and you're going to notice. That people started buying the stock at 705 and it started ripping so at 705 it went from 234 and by two and it was at a 260 by um by 725 it did its first rip and you notice what did i say you're gonna get the the gap up and the pullback and then there was another gap up and there was a pullback and it kind of like rolled the 9 ema and bwap and it tested the 20 ema and then these kind of bounced up and ripped. And then what happened? The market opened and it sold off. I tell you this, I say this to say that sometimes stocks have their run pre-market. And if you see a stock rip pre-market, there's a large probability that it's going to sell off and it's not going to have its run. It had its run pre-market and let's see what it did the rest of the day. I'll, day I'll zoom out and uh, I'll use a five minute, yeah, it's a five minute chart. And you're going to see that, you know, it just kind of like sold off, okay? It just sold off and you're going to see at the market open you already see pre-market that it's turning and this was a very bearish sign so you could have went short right here if you were just looking at the indicators for a three second the rsi went over 70 so it was a little hot but right here when you see this happen very 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 uh bearish sign and one of the things i don't talk about that i should talk about more is that you guys should be using trend lines so when you see a, a stock gapping one way or the other you should use a trend and the trend kind of like indicates some sort of reversal so, you know it's not a perfect science but it does work a lot so like if you're watching a gap this way and you want to see where it's gonna reverse what you do is you go um to the drawings and you put a trend line here so let's say if i started seeing this gap uh i would have put the trend line here and i would have just you know had it follow its trend so if you see it trending this way and you just kind of like pull it here and then once you see the candle break the trend line, that's when you know the reversal is going to happen, and that's when you get short. So if it was still trending upward, it would have, the, you know, the candlesticks would have kept continuing in this motion. But because the trend was changing, it broke breaks the trend line, and you see it, we could have got short, and you could have made a lot of money. You could have made about 80, 70, 80 cents before the actual, um, um, before it actually found its new support level. All right, and you can do the trend this way. So if you see a stock, let's say you went short this way, and you want to see the trend change, all you do is the same thing again. So you just well, I already have it there. So you could you just go here with the trend line, and you just follow it down. Just just go straight down the way it's going, and you'll see it. Once it breaks the trend, you see. But it actually uh, it found its uh, support level over here, and then it just kind of collapsed, and then it just continues to collapse all day. If you see the MACD, there's no rollover. It just kind of like it stays separated here. And then right here, there was a little change and then it kind of gapped up, went from 248 to like, actually, uh, what is it, 254. So, you know, just a few cents and then it just kind of like faded and died. All right, so that's that's just something to keep in mind. You could have actually went short and just held this whole day. It didn't even get back up, all right? 
So that was the first play. The second play I want to talk about that gapped up pre-market was IDXG. And what did I say? You know, stock spike based on news, right? So what happened was, let's look to see if we can find the article here. And click on live news. And what happened? Look, 8 a.m. there was an article that was released, a news article. Interspace Diagnostic Company um, um, that provides clinically useful molecular diagnostic testing pathology services today announced that the company has launched a multi-site study to provide further evidence of the clinical utility, right? And blah, 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 blah. So that news drove the price up. So if you're watching this and you see the stock get a lot of volume pressure and it starts moving, then this is something that I recommend, you know, it, then it's okay to kind of trade pre-market. And because with jet, not always, but a lot of the times, like um, N, like a NV, a NDEV, I'm sorry, NBCN did was it had its run pre-market. So you see it gapped up from 89 cents to a high of 127, which is pretty incredible. But this happened all within uh, 15 minutes. So you had to be like watching it in order to get in. And then it kind of just stabilized here and then it consolidated and then it sold off, you know? So, so you know, it just, that, that just goes to say that a lot of times these stocks have their run pre-market and they don't run again, okay? And you know, you gotta be really, really careful. But um, today I had a huge winner. So I had zero intentions of tra trading today. Um, so about five minutes to the market open, I was actually sitting at my desk. Now, I don't, I, you know, I'm having a lot of trouble trading at work. One, because I shouldn't be trading at work. And two, because there's a firewall. So sometimes I can connect and sometimes I can't. So I said, let me see, because, you know, I had about 15, 20 minutes to myself. And I was like, let me see, maybe something pops up. I was looking at these stocks. I actually was going to, if I was going to trade anything, I was going to trade AKAO. And, um, you know, this thing ripped. This thing actually, uh, it had a nice, uh, nice run. Um, and let me see, let me just do this. Yeah, so it had, a, it had a nice run. I mean, pre-rock, pre-market, this thing was ripping. It went from like 12 all the way to like $15 in the pre-market. You notice this nice bull flag formed here. You had the, you had the, that's sort of like a bull flag. And here's another bull flag. And it kind of just consolidated here. And then the market opened. And it kind of started selling off. So I thought it was going to probably, you know, sell off for a while. And then it was going to be a bounce split. But I didn't have a lot of time. So what I what did I tell you guys? I told you guys about that new um, three candle gap scanner. So let me just get rid of this. Go to personal. And what you should be doing at that market open is just watching the three candle gap scanner. Because remember, the we had it, the criteria set so that when it has three one minute candles in a row, that when that last candle closes, it's gonna and this candle it's gonna pop up. And what happened was, so I was. You know, I was watching AKO a little bit, and then I saw um, OPGN, and and I saw it. Let me put the one minute chart because that's what I traded, right? So I'm watching the one minute chart, and I had it. You know, the way I teach you guys, right? I usually have the two windows, and then you know, I usually have it set up so like I go into uh, the settings, and it's already set. You know, it's saved so that when I go in, it, it's already with my usual um, settings, but right? I had all this set up and I'm watching the three minute chart on this. So I go here and just like I showed you guys, it's already set up with the three minute chart. And you know, I have my studies, and what I have studies, uh, quick, uh, where is it? Load studies. And I go to my second window study. I have a little bit of less criteria there just to make it easier to watch. And what happened was, so, I see, right? This thing refreshes like every minute. And what happened was around right over here, right, like right in this candle, it popped up. So I clicked in and, I, and what, what I'm looking at, and I'm looking to see how much volume it is and what the percentage changes. So when I saw it, I saw the bull flag forming and I saw that, you know, all the indicators were, were bullish, you know? And, uh, you know, the, the candles were above the 90 MA and VWAP, but not too far overextended. And I knew RSI was hot, but I, I knew the MACD lines were good. So, and it had its first pullback. So I thought, I thought, you know what, this looks good. So I jumped in and I got executed uh, right around 151, right in this candle right here. And I just rolled this bad boy up because it was, it, I mean, it just was, like, it was just zooming. And I want to say I sold, I, I, I sold the second pullback, but it was still 
It still didn't break the 90 in May. The MACD lines were still here, and I'm watching it on the three-minute chart, and it's looking good there. All the lines are good. Everything's looking good. So depending on the time frame you're looking at, uh, obviously the indicators change, but they both look good on the one and the three. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to just stay in this. And then I just rolled this up, and then right around here, I just, like, I think it was like a disc candle. It was like 955, somewhere, what was it, like 950? Yeah, right in this candle is where I sold. And I, I had bought 5,000 shares, and I made a little over $7,500 today. So it was a pretty incredible day. Uh, seven, yeah, it's like, I mean, you can make a lot of money trading momentum when you're in there. And I found, and I just found it by using my three gap candle scan. Just focus on that when the market opens and just start click just go through the charts click just clicking through you know that's what I do is I just click and then I just zoom in and then I just kind of see remember you're looking the things that matter are volume and look at the percentage change so you know it's starting to gap up okay and that's all I did I just looked at I just click and I just look and if I see a uh, pattern forming and all the indicators look good I jump in you know you put your stop loss the low of the candle that you jump in either the low of your candle you jump in or the low of the previous candle so what I you know, when I when I went in, let me just go back in. My internet's been giving me a lot of problems. See, oh man, it's starting to act up again. Uh, sorry about this, guys. Oh, here it goes. All right, so, <clears throat> so when you get in, okay, you can do one or two things. It depends on your risk tolerance, because sometimes like the the stocks kind of drop and then they continue up. So it depends. What you could do is you could put the low of that candle. So the low of this candle was 143. I got executed at 151. I put I put my stop loss at like 145. But technically, if you wanted to be, you know, follow the strategy, strategy to its fullest, you could have put the low of the candle, which was 143. And as your as the price of the stock is going up and you you know you you you're making profit, move the stop loss up. So if you so so let's say and this the and the high of this candle is 181, right? So I'm like moving my stop loss off to like 170, 175. And then each candle that's going up, I'm increasing my stop loss so I can secure my profit, all right? So that's super important. And then what you can do, all right, and then what, what you should do is, and what I did was, and I'm not telling, I, sh I need to be mindful to keep reminding you of this, is I'm putting my trend line. So when I got executed, I just put this trend line and I just have it go up. So I just follow it up. And then I know as, as long as the stock the candles are in front of the trend line, then that's still bullish. But once it breaks it, then that usually means a reversal. And look what happened. It, it broke $3, which is amazing. I sold before 3 because I was scared that it was going to sell off. And it did. It sold off at like, uh, it hit a high of like 3, what was it, 310? And then you see the collapse happen. So at this point, I'll just go back to my one minute candle, only one, one chart. It started to sell off. And you could have gone, you could have gone short here. So remember, when stocks do huge moves like this, they generally sell off. They're not going to be, what you're seeing here with AKAO, uh, and I think it's, it's starting to sell off. Uh, let me go. Uh, let me, no, that's not what I want to do. I want to go into this, no patterns. Oh um, man, sorry guys, I know there's a way I gotta fix this so that I can see. Alright, here we go. Alright, so so you know this stock kind of sold off, right? And then it kind of like started consolidating, it found its support. And this support was really like yesterday's close price. It was about twelve ninety one, I think it closed yesterday. And and look what it did. It sort of bounced around that. And what you do is like if you're looking, if you're you know, you, you definitely wanna you know, put a line where there's support, and you know, it should it should be way longer, right? So that support, and then look, it kind of just ripped. Once it found its support, it just kind of started running, and running and running and running. And this does happen, but this play right here, like when you have these kind of rips, this is more common where it'll rip, and then it'll sell off. And I actually, if I had the time, I would have gone short. I would have shorted it because I. Once you start seeing this roll over, I, and I know that this, you know, this stock has gapped up so much, people are going to start selling. Remember, I cannot stress it enough. These stock companies are dog shit. They're, they suck ass, okay? They are not companies that are going to go from $3 to $100, okay? And if they did, they're not going to stay at $100. they are going to go up, and then they're going to collapse, all right? So don't, don't fall in love with any of these companies, man. Just trade the momentum, make your quick money, 
and then move on, all right? You see my watch list change day to day. I don't care about the stock. I just care about pattern. That's what you want to trade, all right? So um, quick little uh, recap. If you have any questions, hit me up on Facebook, and uh, have a great day, guys. Talk to you. See you in the chat room.